Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Colts Coffee and Conversation. My name is Carl. And I'm Holly. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting edition of Colts Coffee and Conversation. Hope you're ready for a new adventure, because guess what we're starting off today? A new adventure. Oh, man. I can't wait to get into it. I've been waiting to do this for a long time. I know you have, and I had no, not much knowledge about this. No, you haven't. But before we get into the, the greatness that is Colts Coffee and Conversation, we got to do a few things here before we get the show kicked off, as they say. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone reaches out to us. Please reach out to us. Like us. Give us five stars. Let us know you like us. Please, by all means, let us know. We need to know. we got to move that stupid algorithm. We want to go climb up the charts of our genre of podcast. In order to do that, of course, you have to go on and find us over at Anchor. We're also on Stitcher. And, of course, we are on iHeartRadio now. And also on Google Play. Guys, wherever you can see look or find a podcast we're on it no excuses no excuses no excuses that i know anyway uh so reach out to us guys we have a, fa- a facebook f- facebook fan page say that 10 times fast uh we have colts coffee and conversation on facebook we have our instagram colts coffee convo we have the twitter machine at colts coffee con one Colts Coffee Con one, and of course we do have our illustrious email at Colts Coffee Convo at gmail dot com, and we also do have our voice mail option as well. Holly, take it away. Oh yes, please uh, record a message to us and push it to uh, email it to us at Colts Coffee Convo at gmail dot com. Excellent, and of course our disclaimer: we we are for entertainment purposes only. If you don't like it. There's a little button called not play. <laughs> okay. okay. Just don't listen to it. But if you do enjoy us and if you do love us, like it, love it, listen. Share it. Share, share it. it. Yes, of course, we must share. Share. Sharing in the greatness of cold coffee and conversation. Thank you, Bhagwan. You're welcome, Holly. <laughs> okay. But this is for entertainment purposes only based, uh, this is all research based. Uh, we done our homework, folks. So if you don't like it, let us know, but still give us five stars. Hey, there you go. But uh, yes, this is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, we are not, prof- well, we don't consider ourselves professional uh, in this, but uh, we do take pride in our work. So uh, once again, let us know. I am begging for the stars. Yes. All right. Okay. You ready to get into it, Holly? I've been ready. Okay. Are you ready to reveal what we are going to discuss today? Oh, I think you should do it. Since oh, it was your well, topic and you decided you wanted to do this one a long fine. time ago. All right. We're going to talk about the Heaven's Gate. Now, if you guys don't know who the Heaven's Gate is, excellent. You're going to learn a lot. Yes. And if you're semi-familiar with it, if you're sitting there at your cubicle or doing your laundry or... Cooking your children food or, or cooking yourself food. Or maybe even jogging, or, walking. Yes, working out. Or driving in traffic. Oh, yes, driving in the five freeway, stuck in traffic. Yes. The rest of us. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do. Guilty as charged on that. But if you're sitting there going, Heaven's Gate, why does this ring a bell? If you're 20, I'd be shocked if you knew this. Oh, yeah. If you're 30, mm, might, maybe. Probably not. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, we're not. we're still babies. Uh, but if you're 35, you know. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no, because... Uh, the infamous images of uh, purple shrouds and uh, Nike running shoes. Okay. Yes. So we'll get into that later on. All right. So are you ready to get into it? I am ready. Okay. So the Heaven's Gate. Now this, since we did the uh, wonderful uh, Star Trek V. Uh, the Final Frontier. The Final Frontier episode kind of morphed into kind of a nice transition way of of spaceness, if yes. that's a word. Yes, UFOs, UFOs. Space. Also, yes, uh, yes, go ahead. Yes, and also the 50th year of the Apollo 11, I believe. Oh. That's right. Learned that at a museum. Fancy. Anyway, we're talking about the, the UFO religion. Now, this was actually one of those kind of movements in the, you know, in the 70s and 80s and partial the 90s that you sh- there was a lot of, uh, things sprouting up as things called UFO cults. Yeah, I didn't really realize uh, that. Yeah, when I was doing the digging, I was like, there was more than just these guys? Oh, my gosh. But, yes, they were, these were very popular. Uh, well, they still kind of are, actually. But this is a UFO religious uh, cult, uh, and it's called uh, Millenarian. 
Okay. It's a millenarian cult or millenarian belief system. Uh, now, it was founded in 1974 in Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Home of NASA. Oh, I didn't realize that. Ah, Very good connection. Yeah, excellent, isn't it? Now, the leader of the cults were, well, there's two of them, is male and female. And we're going to learn about these two today. And we're going to set it up for success for episode number two. But uh, their names are Bonnie Nettles and Marshall Applewhite. Now, they also have many multiple different nicknames. Yes, as they go along. As they go along, that's correct. But we're, you know... We're not going to call them their nicknames quite yet. Yes, they're not quite to that point. They're not at that level. But just so you guys are aware, in the end, Bonnie was called T. Marshall Applewhite was called Doe. Okay. Do we want to do any more about that? Go for it. Well, T and Doe, these are, uh, well, from the musical Sound of Music. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doe, a deer, a feet, you know, that whole song. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of a theme song of this group. Yes. And it was because Bonnie Nettles loved that movie. And not to mention Marshall Applewhite's background as well. Oh, yes. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Bonnie loved this song so much. Um, so, yeah, as we go along, some of the, the background of Bonnie and of uh, Marshall at this point, what we're ta talking about will kind of show what they do with the group. Right. Oh, and before we get into further, you know what we forgot to talk about? Our coffee. Oh, no. And that's like we have our, our, our tripod, right? Yes, that's correct. We have our cults, which we're now talking about. We're having a conversation about these cults, but we forgot about the third C. The coffee. The coffee. What brings us together in a nice mug of java. So what are you drinking, Holly? Well, I am having a French roast with, um, it was it, uh, what was the creamer I put in there? The fat-free, oh, yeah. no French sugar, vanilla. French vanilla. no everything. Yes, French vanilla. I am uh, uh, having a large mug of hazelnut coffee, which I've never had. It's and a bit, what kind of creamer? It's a bit put? nutty. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, the creamer, I'm having the full of fat. Extra thick, delicious Italian sweet cream. Oh, and you know what? I do want to say one thing about um, this whole thing was he took my coffee creamer that I wanted. First of all, first of all, stop. Okay. I was making my coffee. Okay. And, of course, Holly gave me the creamer. So I'm sitting there doing my creamer. And then, of course, she sits there and looks at me poor. And then after about, ah. Eh, a few ten moments. Ten seconds of it's creamer going seconds of into creamer. the cup. No. <laughs> Hi. Because it's a My big... name's over exaggeration. No, How are you? Because the mug that he has is it's a huge mug. It's kind of like a soup mug. And where is that mug from? It's Disneyland mug. Oh, it's, it's not just a Disneyland. Mug. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's not it's... just a standard Disneyland mug. You're correct. It's the haunted mansion. Yes, it's the yes. wallpaper. Uh, from it's the, the wallpaper of the mansion. That is correct. Yes. I. It's one of my favorite Black mugs. Black and purple. Yeah, well, I'm not a fan of purple, but I do like the mug. Okay. But anyway, so with my three seconds of pouring, mm. ten. Three seconds of porn. She goes, "Don't use it all." It's like, uh, <laughs> Can't that would have been put back in. <laughs> that would have been great information. Oh, before you handed it to me, because I didn't hand it to me. She handed it to me. So this you is, know. well, I I don't know. Hey, responsibility, Holly. Okay. So. All right. So we're done with our coffee. Okay. Oh, yes. So now we just got done talking about tea and dough for just a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into their personal lives prior to. The creation of the Heaven's Gate. Okay. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and believe it or not, we're going to talk about the actual leader of Heaven's Gate first. And most people will say, oh, it's it's Marshall. No, it's not. It's Bonnie Nettles. Yes. Bonnie Nettles is considered the original leader of the, the Heaven's Gate group. So let's go ahead and talk about Bonnie for, for a little bit. Now, Bonnie was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. Now, she came from a Baptist family background. But she moved away from the belief system as an adult. Now, she, of course, she went to college. She became a registered nurse, so kudos to you. Now, she got married in December of 1949 to a man by the name of Joseph Nettles, and they had four children together. Now, 
this is where, I don't know what happened. She probably got bumped on the head. I don't know the specifics. But in 1972, that's a long gap. Oh, yeah. Obviously, they were doing a family life. They were going to church Yep. Um, in the Baptist church, and the kids were getting raised, and then kind of jumps over that. It does. Mm-hmm. It does. So, now it was stable until 1972. Now it began to deteriorate. Now, <laughs> this work is weird. The beginning of the odd weirdness. Due to the belief that a 19th century monk named Brother Francis would frequently speak with her and give her instructions. Okay, wait a second. Stop. Yes. What do you mean a 19th century monk? He was probably not, he, he wasn't alive, was he? No. Ooh. Yeah, but this may explain a few things because she liked to dabble in things that she shouldn't be dabbling in. Um, now, Nettles often conducted seances. This was her new thing uh, with mediums in order to contact uh, uh, other deceased spirits. Now, of course, she also studied astrology and theo... Theosophy. Theosophy, which I'm trying to remember what that is. Oh, it's some kind of ph- philosophical religious thing. It's pretty much above my understanding. Okay, and then, of course, also do occult studies. Mm -hmm. Now, she would see multiple fortune tellers who told her that she was soon to meet a mysterious man who was tall with light hair and fair complexion. Mm. Yeah, so that's... Now, there's other information regarding her when... uh, for one of her daughters, they would always go in the backyard and look up uh, into space. And, you know, when she was into her astrology okay. stuff. Okay, she would do, um, what do they call it, star charts for people? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. And she would, um, her and her daughter would look up because they felt that they were not of this world. Yeah, they felt out of place. Yes. Okay. So, you know, they would, Bonnie would tell her daughter... And daughter confirmed it that they would wish that a spacecraft would come and pick him up and take him away. Yes. So, yay! That's pretty much on the uh, the level for for Bonnie. But now we can get into um, Marshall. Now he, on the other hand, has a long history chart here, and uh, let's get into it. Now Marshall was born in Spur, Texas, a delightful little town. Now he came from a Pez. Presbyterian family. Now, the kicker is his father was a minister in the Presbyterian church. Now, he was very religious as a child. He was moderately religious as a college student, so he was still involved. Now, he he's very smart. He's not dumb by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he got his bachelor's degree in philosophy, and then he enrolled in the Union Presbyterian Seminary to study theology. He wanted to become a minister. Now, he also got married during this time and had two children. Now, he left seminary to pursue a music career, uh, or at least pursue music as a whole. Now, he became the music director of a Presbyterian church in North Carolina. Now, in 1954, he was drafted by the U.S. Army. Now, he served in Australia and New Mexico. Area 51, just throwing that out. (laughs) I forgot about that. Yep. As a member of the Army Signal Corps. Now, after his exit into the Army, he enrolled at the University of Colorado. Ah, Boulder. Love that Boulder town. It's interesting. Um, uh, Where he, well, he ended up getting a master's degree there in music. And, of course, he focused on musical theater. Now, he decided to move to New York City to launch a singing career, but it was unsuccessful. Now, during this time also, since he wasn't successful, he decided to go back to the learning institution. Uh, He then went to teach music at the University of Alabama, and uh, he was there for a while. Now, he lost his job. Now, how he lost his job, well... Let's kind of paint a picture here. This is probably in the mid to late 50s. Okay. Um, And this is the South. We need to make sure that's understood. That they have a lot of... uh, um, How would you call this? Uh, Very traditional way of life. Yeah, they have traditional values. Yes, traditional values. 
Um, and of course, like I said, it's, it's got to be at least the 50s. Now, he lost his job after pursuing a sexual relationship, not with a female student, but with a male student. So, kind of picture that in your head. Not very good. So, of course, during this time, he separated from his wife uh, after she heard of the affair in 1965. So, this is the 60s. Still a little rough time because... That was where Wallace was standing in front of the door kind of thing. And oh, yeah. There still it was, yeah, there was, it was a lot of civil unrest. Yes. A lot of civil unrest during that time. Now, she divorced. His wife divorced uh, uh, Marshall in 1968. Now, after leaving Alabama, he went to go teach at the University of St. Thomas. Now, I believe this is in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, now, he was certain. Now, he was, I mean, wherever he goes, he's very successful uh serving as a chair of the music department now he also became a popular local singer the guy could actually sing now also while he was there he served as the chair of a choir director of an episcopal church and performing with them in the in the houston grand opera now personally he was struggling with his sexual desires he was openly gay for just a brief time but pursued a relationship with the young woman but she left him due to the pressures from her family, which actually greatly upset him. Okay. Yeah. Now, in 1970, he resigned from the University of St. Thomas, citing depression and other emotional problems. Now, you brought up something that he may have gotten fired. Oh, yeah, he did. But um, now you got me on the spot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think he was, I thought he was let go. Um, but it could have been from uh, the University of Alabama. So, sorry, people. We yeah. don't have our facts exactly straight, but he did let get let go from uh, one of those southern schools. So, it was probably the Alabama situation. Okay. That's, yeah. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Okay. So, now in 1971, he moves to New Mexico, Area 51, <laughs> where he operated a delicatessen, delicatessen, as they call it, or a deli, which we like to call it. But went back to Texas the same year, so it was not very. It's not a successful business. No. no. So in 1971, his father ends up passing away. Now this took him down a downward spiral of uh, and suffered some severe depression. Now that's a lot, but in 1972, things start to take a turn for him. In the positive, well, for him, in his opinion, in it his was. opinion, it was sort of positive. Now he meets Bonnie Nettles. Now you have a little bit of a little well, story for this. Yeah, they met at a hospital. Okay, he was visiting a friend in the hospital. Um, she was working there, and it was uh, rumored it might have been a psychiatric hospital, but that's not um, verified. But anyway, they met. And I know that she really liked him, and she offered to do a star chart for him. Because remember, at that point, she was doing astrology and that kind of thing. Right. And so he said fine. And through this relationship, they were not romantically involved. It was platonic. And so they were like two minds that met, okay? Mm. And so they became close friends. And he would go over to her home. Uh, This is before her uh, ultimate divorce from her husband. Right. um, Because I know that the daughter knew who he was. Yes. And uh, was was friendly, you know, towards him. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't a threat in any kind of physical way or emotional way at that point. Right. They were just uh, very good friends. Right. Now, uh, Marshall recalled, now this is from him, that he knew her for a long time that they had met. In a past life. Mm. Okay. Now, Bonnie told Marshall that their meeting had been foretold by extraterrestrials, uh, uh, persuading him that he had uh, a divine assignment. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. And now, at the time, Marshall began to uh, investigate alternatives to traditional Christian doctrine, and he inclu- including astrology. Now, Marshall had several visions. Now, including the one which he was told that he was chosen for a role like that of Jesus. Ooh, baby. Yeah, I think he's, uh, because of his depression, um, and he met her, she was already 
reforming her belief system. Yes. Okay. Uh, she was doing everything opposite that a Christian should do. Right. And so um, I'm sure her husband was fairly alarmed at all this activity. You think? <laughs> Walking into your home from a good day's work. Hey, honey, I'm up. Why are there candles lit everywhere? Well, not even that. Where's the, What's a Ouija board doing in the center? And oh, yeah, astrology why charts. Is there a, a why is there a going on? strangers in the house? And who's that goth chick wearing a hot top picture? Just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's strange characters. Strictly strange. Because if you just take break down just Marshall with his, I guess you want to call, issues. Yes. Mentally, he could have been very successful. Oh, yeah. A lot of times, I mean, he was an excellent singer. He, he was. He evidently did opera. Yes. And he was an excellent choir director. Yeah, I mean, um, he, he did uh, award-winning choirs, and people said that he was personable. Um, he was always positive, um, very successful. You know, professor, teacher, kind of in that higher yeah, level. It, yeah, he's got like he's not at no podunk colleges. These no. are universities of high standard and learning. Yes, and so obviously... Darn, Berkeley's not here. <laughs> oh. So evidently, yeah. My theory's about They might have go through through there later. I don't know, on their way to uh, Oregon. But... Uh, <gasps> Spoiler alert. Uh, how that's dare okay. you? Go ahead. Sorry. But, um, yeah, so he, was, he wasn't a dummy. He was intelligent, but he needed someone else to form hit the the next step into what they wanted to do. Yes, very Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go um, over that the yeah. next time. Yes. Um because there's quite a bit to it. There's a lot yeah. to it. I wanted to put it together to where we kind of get an idea of who these folks are, you know, where they were mentally, physically, personal life, kind of kind of get make that connection a little bit to kind of go Okay, you know, uh, oh wait, what? You know, going from, you know, hard, you know, with uh, Bonnie going from, yes, I'm coming from going to church and you know all that kind of stuff, and then twelve years in the marriage. Oh wait, it's a forty nine to seventy two, so that's that's a long time actually. I'm just thinking about that. Yeah, forty nine, fifty nine, sixty nine. So it's like twenty three years. So twenty three years of being married and everything's glorious well, and wonderful. We don't know about that. Well, I know. I'm just you know being overly. Positive simplifying about it, yes, yeah, simplifying it, um, to where it was, you know, it looked like a, you know, the standard American living That's kind of true. family. And you know? they were in Texas. They so were in Texas. Yes, yeah. Texas. And um, you know, and now you, your wife of twenty plus years, you're like, what the heck is going on here? So okay, yeah. Yes. Um, I before this, I didn't realize they had this back history of being, you know, involved in the seventies. Uh, and on. I just knew about them in the 90s. So Aha! And no. Pretty much the end, you know. Yes, because the end was in the 90s. Yes, so. But, yes, it does kind of go with our theme with the belief systems in the 70s and 80s into the 90s. Yes. So, alrighty, guys. Well, on that note, good night, Holly. 